Hey guys, how are you doing? This is Zed from Zed Outdoors. I hope you're having an awesome day. So, I'm in the beauty, beautiful county of Dorset, which is in the southwest of England, to join my friend Adam Hawker. Adam, how are you doing? Very well. How are you, Zed? I'm doing very well. What an absolutely glorious day, huh? Uh, we, we've done all right. We've done all right, haven't yeah. we? We've uh, been here for a couple of days now, spending time with uh, friends at uh, Martin Hazel & Co, who you may have seen in previous videos, and also to see Adam Hawker and his delightful family. Um, in this part two of a video, what we're going to do is look at a form of decoration and embellishment called cold rosin. Now, before you, a lot of you are sitting there thinking, well, what is cold rosin? We are going to actually look at some examples in a minute. Now, what this video is, the reason why I say it's a part two is actually just yesterday, and obviously from before where you may have seen the video, is we recorded a video with Adam Hawker on how he teaches you how to carve a spoon. Now, it has been an incredibly well-received video, and this is a natural follow-on from that. Now, this cold rosin is kind of taking that spoon carving a little bit further uh, and allowing you to embellish the spoon that you've carved hopefully using Adam's tutorial or your own methodology. Now cold roasting is a beautiful uh, technique uh, and when you see some of the examples we're going to show in a minute of Adam and the work that he's done then you'll know why it's something that if you're able to do it, even at a very basic level it's a very nice way of customizing your spoon or other woodenware that you have. So without further ado with Adam's kind permission we're going to have a look at a few examples and then we're going to proceed where Adam is going to show you how to call Rose your spoon. So Adam, firstly, what is coal rosin? Coal rosin, um, it's basically a technique of um, decorating a spoon um, or, or any other woodenware. Um, it's, it's, it's not just limited to spoons. Um, and it involves making a single incision with a knife um, which, which basically splays the top fibres of the wood mm -hmm. um, and you can then use an oil into your pattern and then add a colourant in this case in a minute um, I'm going to use finely ground coffee powder um, and then once you've rubbed it into those incisions you can burnish it over so you're burnishing those ends hopefully compressing them back together they will never go right back together but you're compressing them back together and hopefully trying to lock some of the colouring into the, the pattern into the wood. So your work has been pretty pretty renowned for doing a lot of coral rosing and you go into some very intricate design work um, so is these some examples that you've got over here? Yeah um, I don't have many, well we've got a traditional sort of Sami basket weave um, and then uh, here is which, uh, the spoon which I'm going to finish off in a minute to demonstrate the technique, um, this is a harlequin pattern um, but yeah, they're tradi these are traditional Sami patterns so uh, coal rosing is Scandinavian um, tradition Right so shall we move on to the first step then of cold rosin? And it may be uh, it's something I do want to add on right here and now that this particular video where Adam's teaching cold rosin, we're actually going to work with a very, very simple design. And in the future, uh, with hopefully um, something that you guys want to see and with Adam's kind permission, we will actually show you the more advanced stuff um, with this design. But the goal with this video is for Adam to teach you the principles of cold rosin for you to actually be able to go out there and do it and not necessarily get intimidated by kind of you know, this very intricate design work that Adam does. I mean, would that be suffice to say? Yeah, I, I mean, um, with these type of patterns, uh, I find the, the bit that takes the most amount of time is actually laying the, the pattern out. Right. And even though I don't exactly lay a pattern out, I just lay a, a, a grid out, basically, on the spoon. But marking that grid out can be a little bit time consuming. It's certainly more time consuming than actually doing the coal rosin itself. Right. So what we'll do, perhaps in a future video we may tackle kind of doing a more intricate artwork. Um, and for now it's really about a simple design which we'll move on to right now. So Adam you have a spoon here already prepared. Yeah this is um, a spoon which I, I've, I've nearly finished. Um, so yeah Purely uh, the, the idea of this video, like you, you um, said just a minute ago, this is just to quickly show you the technique involved. It, we're not touching very um, 
deeply on, on the subject in this video. This is just purely to show you how I do it um, and then what we'll do in a minute. Once I've gone over, so what I'm going to do is just cold rose this little tiny design I've left in the box um, and then after that I will oil the spoon and add the colour in, rub it in and show you how to, to highlight it um, using the colour in. Um, and then sealing it by burnishing it back over using the back of my knife. Excellent. So speaking of knife, what knife would you recommend people use? Um, well, ideally I, I'd recommend um, not using a knife because it's got a really sharp edge one side. Right. But um, here, the back of the knife is rounded over, it's nice and smooth. So I want something that's rounded over, no sharp square edges. Right. Um, so you want something that's essentially like a wedge, basically. Is that what you're saying? Um, not, not really. It's more about having a rounded shape right. that's, that's solid and highly polished. So um, uh, some people use antler. I've heard of antler being used. Mm -hmm. um, you can get special burnishing brushes from the States, which I, right. I do believe are, uh, are Native American in origin. I'm not 100% right. sure. Um, but yeah, I just use the back of my knife because it's nice and round and right. that is smooth so I'm not going to scratch or damage the spoon as I'm doing it. Um, right. And to make the incision then, are you using, uh, uh, is there a particular knife that people can use? I, I use, um, a, yeah, a coal rosing or chip carving knife um, mainly but you can use a normal knife. It's just a case of holding it a bit like a pencil if you're worried about cutting yourself you can tape the blade up so just the tip is showing. Right. So you're less likely to cut yourself on the blade. Um, but uh, generally, if you, as long as you hold the knife properly, you shouldn't cause yourself any damage. Right. Um, for instance, so I'd hold it, choke it down right by the tip of the blade and use it like this. So what do you do? You're going in at an angle rather than going straight down? Or? Well, I'm, I'm actually angling it over so that the camera can see a bit better. But gotcha. yeah, ideally I want to go straight down. A little bit of an angle won't make any difference. Right. Um, and what you're doing, you're basically creating a, a, a kind of crevice, aren't you? You're creating like a... Yeah, yeah. Um, an incision. Um, yeah. So I'm parting the fibres of the wood right. ever so slightly. Um... Yeah, let me put this knife away. Um, I'll get my Coros knife out. This is the knife I use. This is my preferred knife. Um, I like it because it's much thicker in section here, so, um, so it means I've got a much wider um, bevel. Right. As opposed to something that's like the bevel on the knife is much more shallower than the bevel on the Coros knife. Right. So, because it's wider, it means it's going to splay the wood fibres slightly more right. than a normal knife. Um, and when I'm doing detail work, um, like these little crosses, I can use the shape of that, that triangle of the knife to create these, these um, little crosses, sections of crosses. Gotcha. I'll show you that on here. Um, so, essentially... Um, most people who won't have a dedicated uh, Carl Rose in knife, they can use the tip of their normal blade. They can use, yeah, a normal Mora okay. or, or, yeah, depending on the knife. Okay, perfect. Knife. So with this one, you've marked it out with a pencil, uh, your design, and so now you're going to make the incision. Yes. Shall I go yeah, for it? Yeah, please go for it. Um, so I find when I'm Carl Rose in, um, I like to be nice and tight and kind of lock my body in, I've got, I rest the, the wood or the spoon on, on my knee so it's nice and steady, I've got the palm of the base of my hand here on my knee, I, I'm kind of making myself nice and tight right? because um, there is always a danger of, of the knife slipping and, and, and obviously making a nasty mark on your right. work so that the tighter you can have the better. Um, I'm also not pushing down too much. I'm almost just using as I drag the knife that to kind of pull in and create right. the, the cut. Um, 
Okay, and there's no real rhyme or reason which way I start. I'll start here. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is just go round the entire design. See how I've got my fingers here all locked together, my thumb here are nice and tight, so there's not much room for the, the knife right. to slip. There's no not much margin for error. And I'm just coming around and as I come to the corner I'm I'm turning the spoon. There we go, there's a slip. Right. Luckily I think I'll get away with that. It hasn't gone too far out of my design. And some woods are less forgiving than the others. Um, so tighter grain woods are better for doing this. So things like fruit woods and, and whatnot, is that? Yeah. So there where I've got a corner, I can always keep the knife in the wood and just pivot it around, move the spoon around. Right. So I've done my design. What I'm going to do is display the ends out so they're like little fan tails. Um, to do that, I'm going to place my knife right at the tip where I started and I'm just applying downward pressure. Ah, oh, gotcha. Okay. So I'm making a little triangle dent. Right. Um, and then these little bits here. So I'm pushing down and then I just rock the knife out. So that's essentially it um, done really. Um, so yeah, like we said, this is just really a short video just to show you the process involved. Um, in, if we do another video, then I, I'll be able to show you how these are done. So you can see here I'm using my finger right. as a stop and just running the knife around. Um, but yeah, we'll go into to a bit more detail, hopefully, in another video, how I would lay this design out. Perfect. Um, which is, is basically created from drawing a grid on there and then working from a grid. Perfect. Um, but yeah, so what we'll do now is oil it, add the colour and rub it and burnish it over and, and let you guys see the, the finished product. So time to oil the spoon now then, Adam? Yes. Um, and I use um, raw linseed oil. Right. Um, so... You pr promised me a back massage after this. Yeah, no problems. Do you mind if I use my feet? <laughs> <laughs> so you're probably quite liberal then, haven't you? Um, well, I, I want to get... Because uh, this is what I'm, I'm essentially oiling my spoon now, right? Um, so there really isn't no need to soak your spoon in oil for weeks upon end, um, yeah. just one liberal coating and let it cure dry nicely, and that, that should be enough. Um, but yeah, as we touched on yesterday, really, the, I don't know, do you really need oil at all? Mm. Do we? Oh, I don't know. I know some would definitely argue not. So yeah, I'm giving it a good liberal dosing of oil. It's actually probably too much, but there we go. Um, 
So yeah, give this a good rub, make sure oil's down in all of those little grooves, if you like. So really press the oil in, basically. Yeah. And then you wipe off the excess. I'm going to wipe off just a bit, just the surface. Right. Um, that's all. And, and try and get a bit off my thumb and finger when I, so I can transport the coffee over. So now that this, you wiped off the excess with the oil, um, so you're going to be using coffee now. So this is your preferred uh, uh, method then for... Yeah. So for, for example, uh, uh, a lot of bushcrafters watch your channel. Could they use coal, charcoal? Yes, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, many things really. Yeah, charcoal, cinnamon's another, um, cinnamon powder is another one I, I've used in the past. Right. So your preference is coffee, ground coffee? Yeah. And, and I like to uh, make sure, get a mortar and pestle and make sure it's really fine. Is it decaf or caffeinated coffee? Uh, full, full fat, I'm afraid. That's Always. it. Always. Mere cat mode. So with the coffee now, you're going to put that on? Yeah. So I'm, I'm literally going to just take a pinch sprinkle it on the spoon and then using my finger and just start rubbing it into all, all the, the pattern and you can see how it oh gosh that really comes out doesn't it okay so that's quite right. and then I'm going to take dry cloth and just wipe off the excess I uh, quite find get a little bit stuck around here. Okay, so now it's ready for burnishing. So now the burnishing. Yes. Um. So so yeah, like I said, using like a rounded, smooth surface. I'm literally going to press down onto the spoon and then just rubbing all over the f face of the handle. So what is this essentially doing? This is closing up the... It's, it's, it's hopefully compressing back over those, those fibres which have been splayed by the knife in the first right. place. Just hopefully compressing them back down a bit. Right. Um, yeah, and... So I'm making sure I'm working backwards and forwards. And then when I get to the tip here, because I'm using a knife, obviously it's quite easy to come off the end. Right. And because there's downward pressure and energy going backwards and forwards, I could quite easily go and catch myself in the back of the hand. So towards the end, I try and be a bit more vigilant. Luckily I've got this uh, finial here to stop my knife. While you're doing that, what are the other things people could use for burnishing? Uh, wood? And, uh, um, yeah. It occurred to me the other day actually, I, I remember from when I did my engineering apprenticeship, I, I had this uh, fettling tool. Right. And it was uh, effectively um, like a, a half moon shaped file right which had had all the back of it um ground off and then finely ground down until it was this really perfectly honed polished surface right and that would have been perfect um but for the life of me i can't remember where it is um but yeah anything same maybe even a piece of um stainless steel round bar right um but yeah, I, I use the back of my knife because it's there and yeah. it works. You just have to be careful because it's got an edge which bites one side. Right, gotcha. So that in effect is, is done then? That is it. I'd now, after burnishing, just give it another wipe because you see you still get like a bit of um, coffee coming out. And if you want, at this point I could go back and put a bit more of a coating on the bowl of the spoon. One final question I've got, 
is let's say I've done this now and I've made a let's say I, I didn't do one line properly like an incision um, is there a way of going back and, and kind of uh, 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 making that incision and, and kind of going through the process again or no it's it's there really it's there um, now all you could do is try and incorporate that mistake into the design right um, so so once I did that um, so these box they're, they're effectively square boxes and I, I, I don't know where my, my mind was but I came down and just went over by one and then realised straight away and was like oh no so to, to rectify it I just made these into rectangles right. as opposed to squares gotcha so there you go guys this is a wrap for the video and I hope you enjoyed it and Adam thank you so much once again no problems that's it I've got raw linseed oil hands now yeah that's it. So, the one thing I'd like you to do is the following. There's actually two things I'd like you to do. Number one, I've put links below to Adam's uh, website and I've put a link to his Instagram also. It will mean a lot to me just as a way of saying thank you to go and check out the website and also give him a follow on Instagram. He's becoming very active now on Instagram, sharing a lot of his work. You're going to be able to see a lot of the kind of the previous work that he's done and I can assure you, you will not be disappointed. I've said it before on the How to Carve a Spoon video, which has also been linked to below, that I did with Adam, that honestly, aside from being a good friend, he's honestly one of my favourite spoon carvers and craftsmen out there. He's very, very talented and very humble. And his Corrosi work is off the hook. He's done a, uh, he's done a very, very kind commission for me last year. It was a gift, uh, which I haven't shown yet, actually, ironically, which I'll be showing very, very soon. And you'll see what I mean of the amazing work Adam does. So it would mean a lot to me if you go and check out the links below to his website, and to his Instagram and to give him a follow and if you have any questions or queries are you okay for people to kind of ping uh, you? Of course, yeah. yeah. Yeah, he's a very approachable guy even though he doesn't look it uh, and stuff. He doesn't bite unless you want him to um, and you can ask him, you know, in interact with him and really see the work that he's doing. So, mid lot to me, go and check out the links below. Also put a link below to the video that I did with Adam previously which has been a very well received video on how to carve a spoon. A very detailed, very thorough video showing Adam's process from start to finish. And finally, don't let the kind of real intricate work that Adam does intimidate you if you're doing it for the first time or you're very new to this. Keep it simple, keep the principle simple and have a go. Have a go on whatever woodenware that you've got. Use whatever tools you've got available. As you've seen, the tools are about as simple as you can get. Um, and that was the goal of this video that Adam has done really well, which is to make it a very specialized skill that he's developed into something approachable that you can do yourself at home. And if you go about doing it, which we really hope you do, feel free to tag us on Instagram. It will be amazing to see the kind of things that you get up to. Let your imagination go wild. So once again, I appreciate you watching this video. Please do check out the links below. Thank you once again, Adam. You're welcome. And as always, I hope whatever you're doing from Adam and myself, have a blessed day, a blessed week ahead. Peace out.